In this video, we're going to take an, a quick look at overview of how human insulin can be produced in bacteria. So this may seem weird to you because human insulin is human insulin. So why are we using bacteria to make it? So it turns out that diabetes affects a lot of people. Uh, my grandma had diabetes as well too. I have several other friends whose relatives have diabetes and even some friends who have diabetes as well. And I'm kind of getting scared these days about type two diabetes because I drink a lot of Coca-Cola and don't do enough exercise. So I need to worry about that. But anyways, we can help protect people if they can't make their own insulin by injecting them with insulin that is produced elsewhere. So it turns out insulin is a hormone. Uh, a hormone is just a protein. Proteins are a lot of different things. And it's made up of 51 amino acids. Each amino acid is coded for by one codon which is three bases three dna bases so the idea here is that if the human body that's diseased this type who has the type 1 type diabetes if they can't actually produce the insulin maybe we can get another organism like bacteria to produce the insulin for us so what we can do is we can take that gene and we can transfer it to e coli the type of bacteria and basically trick this bacteria to be our little mini factory if we put the gene into the bacteria then the bacteria starts reading the gene thinking that it's its own instructions and then it starts producing the protein that we need and the reason why we can do that is because of something called universality of the genetic code it's just a fancy way to say we all use the same genetic code all living organisms this is very cool all living organisms use the same genetic code we can transfer genes between all different types of species actually there will be more on this in the genetics unit in the biotechnology unit so check out some of the videos over there to help you understand how you can specifically cut out a gene the actual biochemistry of cutting out a gene and sticking it into another organism but here we're just mentioning that we can take the gene that codes for human insulin put it into bacteria and the bacteria will actually make this protein that's the idea uh, some other techniques we can use although this is mentioned in topic two the biochemistry and intro to molecular biology unit this is very biotechnology ish and so a lot of this will be re-mentioned when you get into the biotechnology unit but here's the point you can use a machine i drew this it doesn't look very nice it's called pcr pcr stands for polymerase chain reaction if you learned about dna replication then you've heard of the enzyme called polymerase which will help to amplify DNA, which means you take one strand of DNA and it'll make many, many copies of this. Uh, DNA polymerase is the enzyme that normally helps to make all the copies, but in this case, if we wanna really speed up the production, then we can use a special type of DNA polymerase called TAC, that's its cool little nickname, called TAC DNA polymerase. And to speed up reactions, we use high temperatures. But we, if we use temperatures that are too high, that can cause enzymes to denature. But this special type of DNA polymerase called TAC DNA polymerase won't denature because it's actually derived from a type of bacteria that's only found in hot springs. So it's evolved to survive in super hot temperatures. I can't even survive when I sit in a hot spring for very long. But this bacteria, a species named Thermus aquaticus, it sounds very cool. I like that. Water hot. They live in hot springs. Their DNA polymerase that they use has been called TAC DNA polymerase, and that's what we're using to speed up this actual process here. So it's just showing you in high temperatures that we can make multiple copies of the DNA that we're looking for. We can put these all into bacteria, and then we can help to produce uh, a lot of the insulin that humans can't produce, and then we can sell that. Here is just a quick diagram that shows uh, the different types of amino acids. These are the shorthand three letter names for the different types of amino acids. And by understanding these different types of amino acids and how the different parts can link together, you can understand a little bit more about the amino acid sequences. Okay, thanks a lot.